more orange to brighten up that shadow. I actually have more color on, or more light in the room than I intended, but I uh, feel a little bit of I actually want to just do a bit more contrast between the lights and the darks. But we have other people So I can get the form here in a hurry without going into a great deal of detail. I had a student in here working and uh, after my classes and so forth. I went ahead and filled in this uh, foreground. This is um, <clears throat> that linen cloth that has just a warm color to it. It's just a, a warm white color. Uh, and you can see that I've gone darker here than, uh, there, than it is in reality. Almost everything is either as dark as or a little darker than uh, what it is in, in a still life, which will give me some place to build form um, as I work. I try to approximate the exact color and value, but if anything, I want to go a little bit deeper so that will give me some values to, to move up in the, in the value range, and it will give me more form in the end. So now uh, I've got this covered. This uh, cloth, by the way, is nothing more. This is alizarin crimson in the shadows and cad red light in the light areas, and uh, modeling that whole thing that probably will just be done with those, those two colors. And uh, <clears throat> so that's all I've done thus far. I'm going to go into this area that has the fresh fruit in it and see if I can get that done before the fruit uh, deteriorates. If, if it did deteriorate, I would simply go back to the grocery store and get uh, something to replace it. But um, <clears throat> if by chance they don't have any more of those plums, then I would have to get some other fruit. I've done that before. Uh, just. Uh, this depends on what we have available. So I'm going to start in detail now on, uh, <clears throat> I think I'm going to paint, first of all, that bowl, and then I'm going to start with the, the plums. I may, I may uh, go ahead with uh, modeling the deeper values, first of all, with some alizarin crimson, go back and uh, push the alizarin crimson a little bit deeper. And then we'll get up to the lighter areas, which I'll model with a little bit of uh, cad red light. And then I'll put that frosty uh, uh, stuff on the plums. I don't know what that is, but uh, you know, when you polish a plum, you can polish that frosty stuff off of it. Same thing with grapes. They have this little frosty looking covering on them. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that might be, but um, we want to paint that effect because it makes it look more real and more interesting when people look at it, obviously. But here goes this reflected light. A slight bit warmer, so I'm going to leave some of that warm color in there. And that effect wraps around this entire side of the bowl. And we'll actually get a little bit lighter against that background. And so if you're doing a strict reali realism like this, you've got to notice all the relative values and make, make them exactly what they really are. 
And I've gone to this darker value just to uh, make sure this contour looks right before I go back and pull up that highlight. Or that light that's actually striking the base of that of the bowl. Yeah, I think that's about the right value that hits the edge. I'm going to now come up to the top and try and match this value exactly as we hit the edge of the bowl. Now I want this to be very light, but I don't want it to be white yet. I'm, I'm laying on this color, and where I want it to go, I want to save a little of the lightest value for the highlight as it hits the rim. So getting actually a little bit of the alizarin crimson from the plums coming in there. So I may actually have to come back a little bit when it's dried and uh, push that form a little bit. I'm wiping my brush so that I can smooth that edge a little bit. I'm going to come back to the back edge of this bowl, try to get the contour of that rim, and the inside corner against the plum is going to be a dark, dark blue and umber and ultramarine, so I'll push that dark against the edge here. And a slight bit. Uh, I can see that I'm going to have to move this um, blossom end a little bit more towards this edge. So I'm going to put some white or some light hitting that inside corner around the blossom edge because it, it indents there. So. I want to hit that color. And I'm going to put a little bit of cat orange, the lighter version of cat orange. I'm going to blend some of this color in. And the reason I say blend is because I've already got some colors on there that's going to sort of neutralize it a bit so I can go with the real. real cat orange and that will diffuse and get this um, warm reflected light as I see it off the tablecloth. I see this little warm reflection. And same color, actually I think I'm going to touch a little bit of the ultramarine blue because it's a little bit less intense than that thalo green. 
I don't want it to be too intense as I get down here. Uh, Thalo green. Cad yellow. Okay, <clears throat> I think what I'll do is, even though this is all very wet, I can still come up in value, and so I'm going to actually take a pure white and at least mark the spot where the highlight occurs right on the rim of that pole. Let's see if I can actually get that to come up in, in value. If I lay that on thick and it catches the light, it'll give the impression of a highlight, even though the stuff around is pretty close to white. Just uh, laying it on a little thicker will get it uh, to appear a little brighter. Now it's really, you know, if you get real close, you can see that that is laid on thick, but you really don't notice it if you're pulling away. You know, I might pull a little bit of this light away from it. Now I'll probably come back into that edge and play with it some more, maybe bring out highlights. Uh, more. Okay. I'm going to start bringing up the value and the contour of this edge up here. You can see that you younger artists who uh, don't have to wear um, bifocals and don't have to raise your head in order to see close up. Probably should have this a little bit lower on the easel, but it's probably fine just about where it is. I've got my head right in the middle of the canvas, which is good. Now we come to the, some of the refinements on, uh, on this piece of crockery where we're actually going to be making some adjustments, some minor adjustments, but it makes it has a lot to do with the final look of the form here. This edge is lighter as we come around the top of the crack of the pitcher. And we hit a lighter spot on the contour of the pitcher. ultramarine blue and white and of course uh, if I get into the shadow it's uh, Rossian ultramarine blue and white so obviously you're crossing the uh, you're going with opposites on the color wheel to achieve a neutralized effect on there now after I get this effect on here, I do want to make sure that I'm getting the appearance of the roundness. Now, that's really the most important part of this is to get the volume uh, to work with the detail. Uh, the volume, the form is actually more important than the detail. And that's something you have to get the students to understand that um, 
after they're finished with a product like this, the, uh, the details can overwhelm the form so that, uh, you know, if you're painting an apple and you get all the spots on the apple, but it still doesn't look like an apple or doesn't have the form of an apple, uh, the detail really hadn't done us any good. So we have to be careful what the appearance is like when we're all through. <clears throat> now I'm just getting the surface to look a little frosty, a little uh, red-violet color. And in the shadows, of course, I'm going to have to go to a deeper blue uh, because that will help us turn the corner from the light into the darkness. Um, that may seem to be a minor point to some people, but lots of people will just not make the effort to change their value as the shift from light to the dark. And even after I get all this on there, I'll, I'll just uh, sort of squint my eyes and look at it carefully to see that the form is working and that I've got the texture working on there on that surface also. So in doing the finish in, in a very realistic um, painting, you just have to keep um, pushing the form mostly and looking for ways to make it a little bit more detailed, a little bit more um, like the original. Um, some of my favorite artists, you know, I, who are working today, of course, Nelson Shanks and uh, <clears throat> as far as uh, Nelson Shanks is a portrait painter, a figure painter. Um, I like Stephen Sale's work. I like. Uh, Jacob Collins' work. Uh, there's a few young artists, and of course, um, Dan Gerhardt's does a very impressionistic type of style. And that seems to be very popular amongst those who uh, judge all these shows. I, I think they assume that one is somehow more talented if they can sort of abbreviate all this realism. And so you're more apt to get awards, I think, if you paint in a, an impressionistic fashion. For those who are not interested in doing all this detail, all you have to do is paint with a bigger brush. Same principles are in place. You just paint with a bigger brush and don't get down to the little stuff. And, uh, you know, if, if you're trying to paint like me and don't want to spend your life doing it, paint with as large a brush as you can. Um, on any part of the project. In other words, don't get down to too small a brush and all the detail. There are several principles of speed that you want to think of when you're trying to paint. Um, number one, you can cover an object with its basic color and then go for the lights and darks. It's just faster to do it that way. Don't try to place every little piece of light and dark uh, right to begin with. You'll spend your life putting in all this little tapestry of stuff in there. 
Now I know uh, Morgan Weisling sort of does that with his brush. He will uh, he will put on these all little patches of color, but he uses a big brush and he blends them a little bit as he goes, not too much because uh, his paint quality is is peculiar in that fashion. It just uh, becomes little tiny patches of color and then is just a little partially blended. What I'm doing right at the moment is cleaning up a little bit of this, the edges that I've been working with. One vastly important thing is to uh, make the edges softened on any rounded form, of course, so that it's a little bit diffused at the edge. If it's too hard an edge, a hard edge will come forward and not uh, recede like you're intending it to do. So you've got to soften edges and make them uh, turn the corners. Uh, I was speaking about uh, students and why they might not function at their highest ability. Uh, and I mentioned two reasons. Um, either they weren't uh, really looking and focusing on what they were doing or they get tired of the effort. Uh, so um, probably they um, just don't quite have the ambition. And you have to kind of wonder what it is that fuels the student. What makes them want to perform at a high level? And I, I think it's mostly, like Michelangelo said, uh, if they realize they can do it and they can make something beautiful. Um, and of course, my job as an artist, uh, an art teacher, is to help them push themselves to do that. If they can realize that they can do something beautiful or get that energy of the creative act in their brains, um, then they can then they can perform because that sort of gives you the fuel to, to uh, put the energy into it. Um, when you think that you can do something that is beautiful or awe-striking or something that other people will want to look at, uh, I think what I'm going to do is work into this, uh, this bowl of um, eggs and we'll, we'll put the form on that. I've, what I'm going to do to begin with, uh, since I'm, I'm not sure I've got the exact location I want on all these things, I'm not going to start in the middle. I'm starting with what I'm already, I've already got established and I'm going to move to the right slowly and, uh, <clears throat> and put the form, as much form as I can, to each one of those eggs. So. Here I go with the, I'm going to put, uh, use the, do the edge of that uh, bowl first. It has a little texture to it. It's a little bit different. <clears throat> and I'm starting with some yellow ochre and white and a little ultramarine blue to neutralize it in case it's too yellow. And number two, uh, sable brush. So I test my stroke to begin with. Make sure I'm getting the color and the value that I want. I want to come back on this edge, lighten it just a little bit. And then what I'll do is come back and put in this uh, neutral texture that is uh, part of the rim. I don't exactly know what that is, but it's, uh, it looks like it's, the rim is a little aged looking because of that. So I'm looking at burnt 
a raw sienna, a little ultramarine blue. Touch of burnt sienna to get that warm, neutral tone that I see. A little texture, and I'm laying my brush on the side so that it pulls off some of that texture, some of that paint. And I want to drag my brush a little bit. This is uh, scumbling, if you will, where you're uh, putting a wet over a dry surface. I'm trying to get somewhat of a textural effect. <clears throat> I'm going to pull out my pure white for the lightest part of that. And then build the form back to the shadow. I'll model it back to that uh, darker edge. And I think I want to go a little bit cooler on that edge, too. So I'm going to actually get a little more blue on my brush and work it into the shadow. Even though it's got some, uh, I'm sure there's, there are some warm objects still left. It'll probably have some reflected warm into it. I'm going to cool that color a little bit. I've got color on there already, so I know uh, if I come up in value, it will um, blend with what's already on there. So I just lighten a bit. And I see that I really want a more of a cool shadow up towards the top, so. I'm gonna pull in some of this cool color and blend it. Now, I'm not sure I've got enough contrast, but I'm going to put in the light side of that egg and see if that does give it enough contrast against this edge. So all the time I'm doing this, I have to be very observant to see what uh, color I'm actually dealing with. Uh, I've got a warmer shadow on the left and a kind of cooler shadow on the front part of the egg. Picking up some of the light source, I guess. just a touch more chrome in there. So I'm going to go for a little burnt sienna and even a slight a bit of cadmium light. Um, again, I look for the opportunity to throw in a little color. If I can see it, I'll do it. 
I see that uh, that I can throw in a little more intensity. I usually take that opportunity. Now I'm going to uh, build the form on the top side. First of all, I want to get this a little bit darker against that point of the egg. So I want that background to give me a little bit of contrast there. Now I'm going to build this form. <coughs> And now I'm contouring this uh, lower part of the lip right here. I'm going to stop and do the top part. Before I get down there, I'm going to soften this edge just a little bit. And then I want a little bit more form. That means on this on this lower lip, that means I'm gonna lighten it in the front a little bit. I have to get myself untangled. All right. Okay, we're going to do some copper here. So we will put in the darks first and uh, work up to the highlights. Copper and all reflective objects are are the same. They've got um, a great deal of contrast and that's of course what we want out of this, what we're going to try to achieve. So we're going to go dark first. I'm going to lower this a little bit so it'll be more on my eye level when I'm painting it. And so here we have the rings. Of the beaten copper that we see there. Darken all this metal around here and then I'll start bringing up the highlights. Now uh, copper is an unusual thing to paint, but you've got to be aware of how to bring up the values in, with copper because the basic color is is burnt sienna but if you uh, bring up the value by adding white it's just going to make the color really dead so you've got to stay within the family and bring up the intensity and the chroma as you approach that uh, the highlights and so if you if you try to add white to these colors, it would just make mud. So you really have to be careful on your values. Not to use too much white. So we're going darker first. And I'm using 
big bristle brush. So essentially I'm using my earth colors and then I'll come up with the cadmium colors. Keep it in this range of red brown color that we see. And all this um, silvery color that looks like pewter combined with the copper, that's going to be a combination of uh, ultramarine blue and burnt umber and white. Makes a great gun barrel gray color. And we'll put on a little bit of that just for effect right now. It's going to be a little bit of a cream color. get to that really, really bright highlight until we're really ready to put that on. We won't uh, get up into that value until we have prepared everything else. very deep brown red down here in this shadowy color. And I'm going to go neutral up there in the corner. It, um, that color will be burnt sienna. And I'm going to add a little white because that will dull the color and yet it'll be this um, brown that I see up there in the corner. Now there are some pewter colors which are silvery on the surface there and in order to get those colors you've got to get um, a gun barrel gray color which is made with burnt umber and ultramarine blue and a little bit of white. What I'm looking at will make it look a little bit more like copper. I'll, I'll uh, work with it a little while to put any extra effects in that I might see need to need to go into it. So I have some lighter values. I'm going to go back now and put in some of the um, silvery colors with some 
ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and white. I'm going to start with a darker silvery color that I see back here in the corner. I'm